Manners maketh man. Do you know what that means? Then let me teach you a lesson. Manners make a man. That's the motto of all Kingman's movies. It's highly violent movie. That's why mind it in case you haven't watched it yet. But it's so masterly done that will keep you on the edge of your seat until the very end. It's not as predictable as you might think it is. The Secret Service is Matthew Vaughn's ultra violent and stylized take on classy British espionage that is heavily influenced by the James Bond films of the 70s and 80s. It's fast, it's sleek, it's so masterly created, guys, and it's oddly charming. All of the elements that make those classic spy films great are strictly and highly amplified in this movie. That's why it became popular. We have the second part and also the third one. We're gonna hear British accents and the British vocabulary. This movie is so full of different idioms and phrases. That's why we have a lot to learn today together. You're gonna love it and you're gonna enjoy it. So let's begin and have fun with the movie and the vocabulary together. Son of a... No stomach for violence. I mean, literally, I see one drop of blood that is me Done. We see the main villain of the film, who is played by Samuel Jackson. Oh my god, I love this guy. He is a brilliant actor. And he is talking with a little bit of a lisp. When a person mispronounces s, z with th, this way of talking is called a lisp. This was uh, the idea by uh, Samuel Jackson himself. I gave him this interesting speech pattern because I stuttered when I was younger. So people dismissed me in an interesting sort of way because I stuttered. So I became smarter and better than them in other ways. So I think Valentine's had that same issue, that people dismissed him in certain ways until he became this billionaire and people realized he was a genius. Listen, I'm so sorry you had to witness all this unpleasantness due to our uninvited guests. So due to, this is the expression which is used mostly in formal English and it's a synonym to because of. If something is happening because of something, mostly because of something, you can say due largely to something or someone. By the time I found out who he works for, you and I will be the best of friends. Harry is very sad because one of the Kingsman's uh, Lancelots has been killed. To the shop, please. They have the suit shop, kind of like uh, cover their spy agency. So what kind of agency is that? Secret spy organization. They're all codenamed Galahad, Lancelot, Arthur. So there's a, a bit of a reference to King Arthur and his knights. So it's the, it's the modern day spy as, uh, as the modern knight, if you like. This agency was created by gentlemen. And that's why he says, Manners make a man. And he says, maketh man. Yes, so he is using this expression written by old English. Why he's saying like that? To show how old this expression is. That people uh, lived by these words for many centuries. The way you look, the way you talk, shows what kind of person you are not only just your actions that's why knowing and enlarging your vocabulary is not only for educational purposes but also for your own development and for your own well-mannered behavior lancelot was an outstanding agent and a true kingsman he will be sorely missed 
thoroughly. So this word means greatly, means he's gonna be missed a lot. But why he's using exactly the word thoroughly? Sore means actually something painful. So it's, he's gonna be missed to the point of like, he's gonna feel a real pain without him. Lancelot was investigating a group of mercenaries who were experimenting with biological weaponry. Who are these mercenaries? Mercenary, a soldier who fights for any country or group that pays them. Synonym, soldier of fortune. We can call anyone mercenary who is doing something only for the money. So what happened to Lancelot? While he had them under surveillance, he became aware they defected a kidnapping. So he executed a solo rescue mission which failed. Execute. Level C2. To do or perform something, especially in a planned way. The word execute does not only mean uh, to kill someone, yes? It's also to do or perform something. Who is he? Some climate change doomsayer expounds something called Gaia theory about the world healing itself or some such. Doomsayer. Someone who says bad things are going to happen. And because of one of their co-workers is gone, now they gonna look for their substitution, right? A replacement. And Harry already has someone in mind. It's freezing. Why are we walking? Now we're gonna nick his car. Nick something from someone, British English, informal, to steal something. His boss doesn't really like the candidate that Harry has in mind. The world is changing. There's a reason why aristocrats developed weak chins. What he wants to say with this expression. So chin, it's this part of our uh, face, yes? Aristocrats had commoners to do their job for them, even the dirty job, even the fighting or dueling. That's why they never actually had a real fight in their lives and they couldn't take the punch, yes? So this is the punch. Who are you? The man who got you released. That ain't an answer. A little gratitude would be nice. My name is Harry Hart. Gratitude. A strong feeling of appreciation to someone or something for what the person has done to help you. To be grateful is actually to be thankful. You can express your gratitude, you can show your gratitude, you can even feel gratitude or feel grateful, or you can also earn gratitude by doing something for someone, yes, or doing a favor for someone. So what kind of gratitude there can be? Eternal or undying gratitude. Your gratitude is so big that it will never ever end. Deep gratitude going right from your heart. Sincere gratitude, you don't actually lie about it. Immense gratitude, really big, huge. The day your father died, I missed something. And if it went for his courage, my mistake would have cost the lives of every man present. So I owe him. Owe somebody, level B1, to need to pay back, do or give something, because they have done something for you. Your father was a brave man. And having read your files, I think you'd be bitterly disappointed in the choices you've made. You can't talk to me like that. Disappointed, level B1, unhappy or discouraged because your hopes or expectations about something or someone were not satisfied. So to express your disappointment, you can also say terribly disappointed, deeply disappointed. You can use the same word sorely if it's painful for you, yes? Sorely disappointed and bitterly disappointed. Huge IQ, great performance at primary school. And it all went tits up. Drugs, petty crime, never had a job. Oh, you think there's a lot of jobs going around here, dear? Now everything goes tits up. Wow, it's actually a vulgar, you know, expression. Go tits up, rude, vulgar slang, break, fall apart, or cease to work, have a poor, undesired, ruinous outcome, fail completely. Who's to blame for you quitting the Marines? Because my mum went mental. Didn't want me being cannon fodder for snobs like you. Go mental, expression, to start behaving in a very angry way. 
So who is the canon fodder? A military man whose um, officers don't think about uh, as the person who is worth living. We ain't got much choice, you get me? And if we was born with the same silver spoon up our asses, we'd do just as well as you. If not better. Exy is using here great expression and also we can hear his British accent very well. Full uh, expression is to be born with a silver spoon in your mouth. But Exy says up our asses. Yes, so he he's rephrasing it in kind of like street manner. Yes, slang way. What the f are you doing here? You taking a piss? Some more examples of young men who simply need a silver suppository. And here is the joke, the sarcasm, the British humor suppository. It's actually the medication that people use to take inside their uh, ass. And there is nothing shameful about it, yes. So instead of using <laughs> the word arses, as Exy said, he's the gentleman, yes. He uses the word suppository. So the guys that he had a fight before with getting into the pub because of the car that he had nicked and they are saying are you taking the piss this expression is for those who think that articles in the english language are not really important take a piss with the article a yes it means to go to the washroom and pee but to take the piece is totally different meaning. It's already the idiom, meaning to mock someone by doing something and making them look stupid. So be careful, guys, with the articles. No, there are exceptions. Come on. Nonsense, we haven't finished our drinks. After you nicked his car, Dean says you're fair game. You are fair game. Huh. Interesting. So this is another phrase. It means this is the person who can be blamed or who can be criticized. Now we are here to punish you for that because you are the one to be blamed. So whatever your beef with Exy is, and I'm sure it's well founded, I'd appreciate it enormously if you could just leave us in peace. So we all know that beef actually it's the meat. It's cows meat we know pork we know chicken turkey beef yes but here he's not talking about meat at all so what he means with this word so beef has another meaning which is complaint when you are not satisfied with something and you are unhappy about something you talk about it and you say what the problem is so you are complaining yes you are beefing no please i won't say nothing i swear you won't tell us so i'll say feds i've never grasped anyone up grass someone up grass on somebody a phrase to tell the police or someone in authority about something bad that that person has done you are about to embark on what is probably the most dangerous job interview in the world one of you and only one of you will become the next Lancelot. Why he's not saying you're gonna start your training, you're gonna begin your training, yes? He says exactly embark on. So embark on is to start something new or to start something that you've never done or to completely change what you've been doing. You can embark on a new mission, a new job or a new training. You will write the details of your next of kin on that bag. This represents your acknowledgement of the risks, your agreement to strict confidentiality. And he threatens, if something happens, they are the ones who's going to be in that bag. And your next of kin as well. So he shows them how serious this training is. Is that understood? Excellent. Which name or whose person they going to write on that back. Next of kin, a very close family member or your closest relation. Where do they dig you up? You know we're not allowed to discuss who proposed us. No need to bite his head off. Charlie's only making conversation, right Charlie? 
Exi is getting acquainted, yes, with the other team members. You know what? No need to bite uh, their heads off. We are just trying to have the conversation. No need to talk in an angry way or quick angry way for just no reason. Nobody told me to try and save the planet. I wanted to. The story doesn't tell us his main uh, reason of being the villain until almost the end of the movie. Climate change research, lobbying, years of study, billions of dollars, and you know why I quit? Persuade the government or any members in the government to follow your idea or to approve your idea about something. You can have lobbying effort, lobbying campaign or lobbying activity. You can be a lobbying group, a lobbying organization, a lobbying firm. Money won't solve this. Those idiots who call themselves politicians have buried their heads in the sand and stood for nothing but re-election. Bury your head in the sand idiom, to refuse to think about unpleasant facts or ignore an unpleasant situation. Exi and the team have their first task to complete as a survival. You can all wipe those smirks off your faces. You all forgot the most important thing, teamwork. To wipe something off something, it's actually the phrase meaning to remove something and the smirk is a synonym to the word smile but smirk it's not the sincere or pleasant smile it's when you are happy about someone's failure a kingsman agent needs to be able to solve problems under pressure like what to do when one of your group has no parachute so the team continues having trainings now only six of them have left but why the fuck did you choose me as the gimp a mighty expendable candidate no 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 you don't talk to me like that a gimp informal and offensive an unpleasant or stupid person a person with a physical disability especially one that affects someone's legs you need to take that chip off your shoulder He didn't risk his life to, you know, to kill him or to make him a gimp. You have to take the chip off your shoulder, yeah? What the chip and what shoulder, what he wants to say with that? So he is referring to the idiom to have a chip on your shoulder. To have a chip on your shoulder, idiom. To become easily offended or have an angry attitude because you think you have been treated unfairly. Being a gentleman is something one learns. Yeah, but how? Exy actually wants to learn what it is to be the gentleman. It's about being at ease in one's own skin. As Hemingway said, there is nothing noble in being superior to your fellow man. True nobility is being superior to your former self. At ease, comfortable, in one's own skin. Idiom. Relaxed and confident in one's manner of presenting oneself and interacting with others. First thing every gentleman needs is a good suit, by which I mean a bespoke suit, never off the peg. And Kingsman suits are always bulletproof. Of the peg, it's actually a synonym to ready-made. These are the clothes that we actually see in the stores. They are made with the standard measurements and go by sizes. Fitting room two is available. One does not use fitting room two when one is popping one's cherry. Hari is using an amazing idiom that made me laugh. And by the <laughs> laugh on Eggsy's face, you would see that he actually didn't expect Hari to use that idiom as well. To pop one's cherry, a slang phrase, very vulgar, slang phrase meaning to have a sexual intercourse with a virgin yes it means to do something for the first time south glade mission church is a hate group do you think valentine is a supporter no evidence yet of a direct connection but i'll keep looking harry goes 
to the church and he expects to see Valentine there, but he is not there. Valentine wants to test what he has created. Are you sure we're out of range? We're over a thousand feet away. What's wrong? What if the calculations are wrong? You just have to trust me. The person doesn't control himself. The only thing that he wants to do is to fight and kill. It's considered one of the best fighting scenes created in the 21st century. It's four and a half minutes of delicately choreographed, but also absolutely brutal chaos that took seven days to shoot. Can you imagine? It really makes us feel like we are inside the church, right along with Harry, immersing ourselves completely in the action of the scene. Another little touch from the editing department is this kind of constant vibration of the frame. Can you feel it, guys, how the camera is trembling? It gives the scene a feeling of being completely out of control and provides us with the sense of total unease. When I was watching it for the first time, I couldn't even look anywhere else. You know, I was fully into the scene. That's how impressive it is. What did you do to me? I had no control. I killed all those people. We've learned a lot of great phrases and expressions today. We've done a great job. Don't forget about the subscription to the channel. I'm gonna see you very soon in the next video. Have a great day. Bye. As a good friend once said, manners maketh man.